Well, I want to welcome uh, to the Oval Office once again uh, King Abdullah. Uh, uh, His Majesty is a great friend of the United States. Uh, Jordan uh, is a great partner to the United States on a whole host of issues. And obviously, uh, although we just recently saw each other, and I want to thank uh, again His Majesty for the extraordinary hospitality that he showed during our visit, uh, there remain a host of very urgent issues uh, in the region that we're going to have an opportunity to discuss. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate His Majesty on a series of reforms that he's initiated uh, inside of Jordan, uh, and we want to find out how we can continue to be supportive and helpful uh, in creating greater economic opportunity and prosperity uh, in, uh, in the area. Uh, we have uh, been supportive with respect to loan guarantees and other efforts. Uh, in part because we've also seen uh, King Abdullah take uh, some uh, very important steps to further uh, open uh, democratization uh, and entrepreneurship uh, and economic development inside of Jordan. We want to uh, encourage that because we think Jordan uh, can be an extraordinary model uh, for effective governance in the region. Uh, we're also going to have an opportunity to talk about uh, the Middle East peace process. And uh, you know, the last time I saw King Abdullah, I just uh, come out of uh, Israel uh, and the West Bank uh, in consultations with Prime Minister Netanyahu and uh, President uh, Abbas. And uh, Jordan, like the United States, has enormous stake in peace. Uh, and we do think that there's a window of opportunity that needs to be seized, and so we will both consult uh, in how we can jumpstart uh, serious conversations that could lead to uh, a peaceful settlement uh, and uh, both a secure uh, Israel normalized relations with its neighbors and uh, a Palestinian state that was sovereign. Uh, a great urgency right now, obviously, is the situation in Syria. Uh, the Jordan has experienced a huge influx of refugees coming into uh, the country from Syria, uh, people who've been displaced. Uh, Jordan historically has uh, maintained uh, uh, open borders and allowed these refugees on a humanitarian basis to come in, but uh, it's an enormous strain on a small country. And uh, we are mobilizing international support to help with these refugees. Uh, but obviously our goal is to uh, create a stable uh, Syria where civilians are not at risk. Uh, and we both agree that at this point uh, President Assad has lost legitimacy uh, and that uh, we need to find a political transition that allows a uh, multi-sect uh, uh, dem uh, democratic uh, transition to take place so that Syria can be uh, a, uh, a place where all people can live uh, in, in peace and, and harmony. This will be difficult to accomplish. Uh, and yesterday, some of you saw that I uh, asked my people to brief Congress about the fact that we now have uh, some evidence that uh, chemical weapons have been used uh, on the populations in Syria. Uh, now, these are preliminary assessments. They're based on our uh, intelligence uh, gathering. Uh, it, we have varying degrees of confidence about the actual use, but uh, there are a range of questions around how, when, where uh, these weapons may have been used. Uh, so we're going to be pursuing a very vigorous investigation ourselves, and we're going to be consulting with uh, our uh, partners in the region, as well as the international community in the United Nations, to make sure that we are investigating this uh, as uh, effectively and as, quick, uh, as quickly as we can. Uh, but I've meant what I've said, uh, and I'll, I will repeat uh, that uh, it's obviously horrific as it is when mortars are being fired on civilians and uh, people are being indiscriminately killed uh, to use potential weapons of mass destruction on civilian populations uh, crosses uh, another line with respect to uh, international norms and international law. Uh, and that is going to be a game changer. Uh, we have to act prudently. We have to make these assessments deliberately. Uh, but I think all of us, not just in the United States, but around the world, uh, recognize uh, uh, how uh, we cannot stand by uh, and uh, uh, permit uh, the systematic use of uh, weapons like chemical weapons uh, on civilian populations. So this is going to be something that we'll be paying a lot of attention to, uh, trying to confirm uh, and mobilize the international community around those issues. Um, but uh, in everything that we do, 
uh, we very much appreciate the kinds of uh, support, advice, counsel, and partnership that we have with His Majesty and the people of Jordan. Uh, and we look forward to a, uh, a fruitful uh, consultation uh, uh, this afternoon. Mr. President, thank you very much. Uh, we're delighted to be back here again. And uh, may I first uh, start off by expressing, on behalf of myself, uh, the delegation of people in Jordan, uh, our uh, heartfelt condolences on the tremendous tragedy involved in Boston for the bombings, uh, as well as that of, of Texas, uh, uh, especially uh, that of Boston. We have all stood together uh, in our fight against terrorism. Uh, this is an issue that we will always be strong uh, partners uh, there. As you mentioned, sir, on the issue of, uh, of the peace process, uh, when you were in Jordan, uh, I, we had mentioned this is a homework stage. Uh, Jordan will continue to work very closely with the Israelis and the Palestinians, and obviously with our American allies, uh, to see how we can bring the both sides uh, closer together. But one of the major concerns that brings us here to Washington, together, as you alluded to, is obviously um, uh, the challenges of Syria, the fragmentation uh, of Syrian society, which uh, is uh, um, becoming more and more alarming uh, since your last. Uh, a visit to Jordan five weeks ago. Uh, we've had over 60,000 refugees, um, up to over half a million, so we're at 10% of, of an increase of our population. We're so grateful uh, to the support that you and the American people have given to our country. Um, you couldn't do uh, more, quite honestly, and we're so grateful, and I just wanted to express our appreciation uh, on behalf of myself and the Jordanian people for, for that. Um, I think, sir, that uh, we are both working very hard to look for a a political solution for a Syria that is one that is, as you mentioned, inclusive so that we bring everybody together, uh, which is sort of our last hope to, uh, as, as we're now seeing the, um, uh, the surge of um, uh, the second threat, I think, which is that of militant uh, 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 terrorist organizations that have risen over the past several months. Um, but I'm confident with, with your leadership and uh, with the meetings that we will have uh, today uh, that we can find a mechanism to, to bring this solution uh, to an end as quickly as possible. Uh, last week, sir, you had uh, the Crown Prince of, uh, uh, of the United Arab Emirates, uh, Hamid uh, uh, bin Zayed, who is one of our strongest strategic allies, and I know that is uh, his position with the United States, as well as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The three of us are working very hard uh, in cooperation with the United States um, to try and find a, a quick and just solution to the Syrian crisis. So I look forward to our discussions uh, later this afternoon, and I hope that uh, together we will be able to alleviate the suffering of the Syrian crisis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You guys all have the same question? Yes. yes. No. Do you have a deadline, Mr. Yeah. President? Uh, Do you have a deadline? Hold on a second. One at a time. The, uh, what we have right now is an intelligence assessment. Uh, and as I said, uh, knowing that potentially chemical weapons have been used inside of Syria uh, doesn't tell us when they were used, how they were used obtaining confirmation uh, and strong evidence. Uh, all of those things we have to make sure that we work on with the international community. And we ourselves are going to be putting a lot of resources into focusing on this. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, in many ways, uh, a line's been crossed when we see tens of thousands of innocent people being killed uh, by a regime. But the use of chemical weapons and the dangers that poses to the international community, uh, to neighbors of Syria, uh, the potential for chemical weapons to get into the hands of terrorists, all of those things uh, add increased urgency to what is already uh, a significant uh, security problem and humanitarian problem in the region. So uh, we're going to be working with countries like Jordan uh, to try to obtain more direct evidence and confirmation of this potential use. In the meantime, uh, I've been very clear publicly, but also privately, that for the Syrian government to utilize chemical weapons on its people uh, crosses a line that will change my calculus and how the United States approaches these issues. Uh, so uh, you know, this is not an on or off switch. This is uh, an ongoing challenge that uh, all of us uh, have to be concerned about. And 
Uh, we're going to be working with the international community and our partners uh, to keep our eyes on what's happening on the ground, to gather any evidence of potential chemical weapon use, uh, and at the same time to continue to help with a uh, moderate and inclusive opposition uh, to help bring about the day when the Syrian people can once again focus on uh, living their lives, raising their children, starting businesses, uh, and uh, uh, obtaining basic freedom and human rights. Uh, this is going to be a, a long-term proposition. This is not going to be something that is solved easily overnight, uh, but uh, I know that uh, King Abdullah is committed to trying to find these kinds of solutions so much. All right?